Sup guys, Roman here from Tech Guides, and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to access your applications that you have running on your home server from outside your local network, so over the internet. So if you guys have been following my home server tutorial video series, then hopefully you have an Ubuntu server up and running, which is running Apache and which hosts Nextcloud, and hopefully you also have the Bitwarden password manager up and running on your server. By the way, if you missed these videos and you're curious how to set up these applications, then definitely check out the video linked in the card right now. Anyways, up until this point, all I've shown you was how to access these applications from your local network. So likely you would have gone to 192.168, one point, whatever number your uh, home server is running behind, uh, which will then host or which will then present you with the Nextcloud interface. And on the other hand, if you wanted to access your Bitwarden instance, you would simply add the 8080 port after the local IP address of your home server. Now, this is all nice and fine, and it works wonderfully as long as you only want to access your applications in your local network. However, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up DIN DNS, so Dynamic DNS, which helps you to access these applications from anywhere in the world. You see, what you need in order to access these applications from outside your local network is your public IP address. So this is the IP address that your ISP provides you with. And using this IP address, you should be able to connect to the applications running on your home server. However, there's two things that you actually need to set up first in order for this to work. The first are the proper router settings. Um, you need to set it up in order to actually al allow um, connections coming from the internet uh, to be routed onto your home server. And the second thing is that with most modern ISPs, you usually don't have the same public IP address day in, day out. They usually just distribute them depending how many people are actually using their service at a given time. And this is exactly where DINDNS comes in and saves the day. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can actually get a free domain name, um, which is linked to a DINDNS provider that allows you then to connect to your applications running on your home server um, and that is able to update your public IP address um, from your home server whenever it changes. So with this rather lengthy introduction, I'm sorry, it's a rather complicated topic today, I think it's about time to now go on to the first step, uh, which is required in order to access your home server over the internet, which is port forwarding, port 80 and 443 from your router onto your home server. Now in order to do this, what you want to do is to connect to the standard gateway or to the admin panel of your router. Now usually this is behind 192.168.1.1, but this is not the same for every router. So if nothing shows up under this IP address, what you can do is to open up a new CMD shell, type ipconfig forward slash all, and under the ethernet adapter that is currently used to connect to the internet, you should find the default gateway entry which then will provide you with the local IP address of your router. Now, obviously, you'll need to know your password. I'm going to use Bitwarden to automatically fill out uh, my passwords here. Bitwarden is an amazing software. If you don't have it installed, you're definitely missing out. Um, and now you probably want to go to the network tab or something. This is definitely going to look very different from uh, your router settings because this is uh, specific to my ISP, Swisscom. Um, so this will most definitely look different, but you'll definitely have a network tab somewhere where somewhere you should be finding the port forwarding option. If this isn't presented to you, sometimes you also have to enable the expert mode because why not? And on this page, what you want to do is to add a new rule, which is usually done using some button, for example, add new rule. And then you want to add a new rule, which points port 80 um, using the TCP protocol to your home server. So I've already done that, so I don't have to do it again. And then you want to do the same thing for port 443. So this is for HTTPS, so the secured connection or the encrypted connection, again, using the TCP protocol um, to your home server. Now, basically all traffic on the internet is either routed through port 80, if the website is not secure, or through port 443, if the page is using encryption. And that's it. With this, you've already finished the first part. You've successfully set up your router in order to port forward connections from the internet to your home server. Now, the eagle eye among you might have already spotted the DIN DNS section here, um, but I actually refrain from showing you how to set this up on the router because all of the routers have different kind of settings and they don't really work 
e equally. And this actually also works without the router interfering. So you can set up Thin DNS without the router actually supporting it, which is actually a big plus because not all people have a router um, accessible that supports Thin DNS. So instead, in this video, I'm showing you how to use a Dyn DNS service provider in order to get a dynamic domain name. So go to DYNU, uh, create an account, enter your credentials, generate a password using the Bitwarden Password Manager. If you haven't seen my Bitwarden Password Manager video, then definitely check it out, linked in a card right now. And click on the verification token. Let's autofill our password and log in. Now let's click on DDNS services and generate a first domain name. Now you do have the choice between uh, very many different top level domains. So those are the endings of your domain. Uh, you can select whatever you like. I'll just choose something which is rather small and enter whatever host name that you like. Click on add. Hope that nobody has used this host name before you. And that is it. Now, if everything worked to plan, then DYNU has already filled out the IPv4 address uh, with which you've connected to the website. But let's see how to update our IPv4 address automatically from our home server. Now on your server, type sudo chrometap e enter your sudo password. And as you can see, I already did this video with a different DNS provider, which unfortunately doesn't work anymore. But anyways, what we want to do is to tell the server to execute a certain command every so and so often. So let's say that I want to update our IP, my IP address every 15 minutes of every hour, every day, week and month, and paste the wget command. Now this you probably want to get from my blog techguys.yt uh, because it's kind of tedious to type it in um, from this video. Now, essentially what this does is it executes a wget um, command. It writes the output to a file, dynu log. It uses only the IPv4 protocol and it accesses this URL. So this is where the host name should go that you've just created. In my case, techguides.gizi.com. My IP, you should leave at 10.0.0.0 meaning that it will update it um, depending on the IP from which you accessed this um, URL from. So the one that is belonging to your home server. My IPv6, we want to disable. We don't want to share that. Under username, enter your username. And finally, for the password, we don't just want to type it in clear text here because this is actually kind of a safety issue if you just put this into a text file. This, this Chrome tab is simply a text file, so anybody with access to your server could actually read this. So instead, we're actually going to provide a hashed version of our password, um, which you can generate also on the DYNU website. So paste your password and click on MD5 hash. Now copy the hash and paste it under password. And that's it, you can now press Ctrl X, Y and Enter. And hopefully your IP address should automatically update every 15 minutes. Now you can actually check if this worked by uh, entering this command manually. So let's open this Chrome tab once again here. Copy this line, paste the command into your console and inspect the DYNU log by typing cat DYNU log and either you'll get an OK with the updated IP address or the message no change required because the IP address has already been set previously. Now, if you only want to serve one application, for example, Nextcloud, then that's already good enough. You can now access your home server by browsing to your DNS URL name. However, if you also want to access different applications running on your home server, you'll want to set up a CNAME entry, which is essentially a sub subdomain of your dynamic URL name, uh, which then allows you to access that application through this sub subdomain. So to do this, click on DNS records, under type, select the CNAME. As node name, we're going to use BW. So this will be Bitwarden. And then finally, the host name will simply be your DNS URL. Now what this does, it essentially creates a sub subdomain. As you can see, the sub subdomain bw.techguides 
techguides.gze.com, which then points to the actual domain name techguides.gze.com, which then points to my public IP address. Back on our server, all we have to do now is to set up the Apache reverse proxy to point the different domain names to the different applications running on our server. To do this, go to etc, Apache 2, sites available, and edit the 000 default configuration file. Don't forget the sudo. So what you want to do here is to specify new virtual host entries. Uh, so we want to point a certain server name, which is the dynamic domain name that we just created, so in my case techguides.gz.com, to point to a certain document root and document root directory. Now down here we have a few rewrite rules which are important if you want to use Nextcloud. If you're not using Nextcloud then you don't need to bother about these and you can just remove them. And you can just point to whatever directory you have running on your server and is hosting some sort of website. Now our second virtual host entry looks a little bit different. So this is when you proxy to an application running on your home server. So for example, this is for Bitwarden and you can see I'm basically routing this sub subdomain here to the application running on port 8080 on our home server. So this is simply the Docker containing which runs Bitwarden. By the way, if you have no idea what to type under your virtual host entry um, for the specific application that you're trying to run on your home server, then you can simply Google your application and Apache reverse proxy. And hopefully if there is good documentation, you should find some pointers on what to put into your Apache reverse proxy configuration file. So once you put everything in, press Ctrl X, Y and enter. Now finally, we'll have to enable a few modifications to Apache in order for the proxying to properly work. So type sudo a2, stands for Apache2, enable modification, proxy, as well as proxy HTTP. Press enter and reload Apache by typing in sudo service Apache2 restart. And if you didn't mess up anything in the Apache reverse proxy configuration file, then you don't get an output at all, otherwise you'll get one and you can inspect where some issue uh, might have occurred. And that's it, hopefully with that you are now able to connect to your application over the URL from DYNU. Now obviously here's a bit of a problem, it says that I actually cannot um, access my Nextcloud instance and the reason for that is that this domain name uh, isn't specified as one of the trusted domains in our Nextcloud instance. Um, so let's just first quickly check if our Bitwarden instance actually loads. This actually looks really nice. Um, as you can see, we can log in here and access our Bitwarden, but Nextcloud still has an issue. Um, so to fix that, let's go into the uh, Nextcloud configuration folder um, and edit the config.php file. And here you'll want to add another entry under uh, trusted domains which in my case is the domain that I got here from DYNU. Press Ctrl X, Y, enter. And hopefully now you should be able to access your Nextcloud instance through the free domain name that you got from DYNU. By the way, if you want to know how to encrypt your connection, so how to use HTTPS in order to access your applications, then definitely stick around because this will be one of my next videos where I'll show you how to use Let's Encrypt in order to encrypt um, the connection onto your home server. So if you don't want to miss that, then definitely hit that sub button and ring the bell in order not to miss it when it comes out. But that wraps it up for today's video guys. I know it's been quite a while since I've uploaded recently, um, but I was really busy here. Um, and you might also notice that I've actually re-decorated um, my studio here. Definitely leave a comment and a like below if you do like the new look of the studio. But that's it for today. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.